All right. Um, I had a few people on the grip board asking me about what it is that I do to gain mass in my forearms. Um, and one of the things that I said was that I like to work my wrist in every conceivable direction. And, and you know, some people wanted to know what that means. Um, you know, one of the things that I've, I've always tried to use is one of these rotating stirrup handles. These right here. Okay. Um, I had said, I mentioned how you can use them at different angles, how you can wrist curl at different angles, not just straight down. I think Evan had posted a video of him doing the wrist curl straight down from, from this position or, or back here with his, with his elbow tucked down at his side. Um, one of the things that you can do, especially if you have an arm wrestling table, kind of helps, okay, um, is... Get your elbow down on a flat surface, wrist curl, wrist curl, wrist curl. Um, and by changing an angle, you can kind of train a wrist curl in what arm wrestlers would, would call a post move, which is here. So you're pulling your wrist back to your shoulder, back to your shoulder. And the way that it works when you have an opponent is, they're coming at you, so you kind of use their momentum because a lot of times when somebody goes to get a hook, they're going to come forward a little bit. So when they come at you and they're trying to get the hook, you post back. I don't know if that angle looks a little bit better right there. Um, the other thing is uh, you can change the angle of the table as well. Like, uh, I hope I pronounce your name correctly. I think it was Al Wadi was saying to, uh, I was saying to, 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 um, do wrist curls at an angle that isn't directly straight across, um, where you would, you know, where you would think somebody would be pinned on an arm wrestling table because you tend to be pinned towards the opposite corner. So not back, but towards the opposite corner and not directly straight to the side. So, you can do wrist curls from that corner this way, this way. The other thing too is when you're when you're hooking and, and usually you you don't you never really wrist curl on an arm wrestling table with your palm up. And I know I'm relating a lot of this to arm wrestling because in, in a lot of ways, I think that's how I developed the most of my, uh, the majority of my forearm mass, but it's, you don't really do this move right here where you're wrist curling back towards you, but it is effective for developing the forearm. I just started doing uh, barbell wrist curls recently. Uh, back in January, and the hardest thing for me to get comfortable was with turning my palms up because a lot of times, you know, when you work so much pronation as an arm wrestler, it's hard to turn your palm up. You almost have to dip your shoulders down just to get your palms facing upward. Uh, so that was that was kind of um, difficult for me to get used to. Uh, and it's also the reason why a lot of people say, well, it's so much more comfortable for me to do wrist curls behind my back. Well, that's for two reasons. Number one, your wrist doesn't do anything but go down straight. It's not going to flop back. And... Um, the other reason is because your wrists just feel kind of more naturally that way, you know, than they do palm up. You're going to feel a little bit more uncomfortable palm up. Um, let me see. Slide this out of the way. The only man in the world with a... 200 pound arm wrestling table. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so like for example, if we were to look at the barbell over here, you can see that when you do wrist curls behind your back, I hope this comes up in the frame. I have to try to switch up a little bit. But when you can, what you can see is it's just comfortable. Your wrists don't flop backwards. They just kind of go down to where your butt is, and then your wrists curl back up. Whereas 
Let me see if I can just bring this down a level. Okay, a little better. All right. Whereas when your feet are on the ground and your palms turned up, it's difficult because it's hard to get your palm up if you're used to training pronation. But I've been doing more of these lately, and, and I started doing them in January. Just palm up, palm up. Um, but I, I, I definitely feel them in a different way than when I do dumbbells, so I would have to say that there's definitely some advantage as, as, as uncomfortable as it feels to do wrist curls with your palm up to, to doing them that way. Um, dumbbells. Uh, a lot of people, especially a lot of the grip guys, and I'm not going to go through thick handles and a lot of the grip lifts that can obviously uh, uh, add mass to your forearms because, you know, you guys are grip guys. You pretty much know that already. And, and I've only been in uh, the sport of grip for, I guess, what, a year and a half, winter 2013, you know, like seriously. So um, most of you know more about grip than I do, so I'm not going to pretend I'm some kind of expert on that. Um, but uh, dumbbells. A uh, friend of mine made this. It is a two-inch dumbbell handle, and it, you know, a lot of people think the thicker the dumbbell, the thicker the forearm, the thicker the wrist, etc. I never saw a reason for going over two inches for anything as an arm wrestler, so I can't attribute extremely thick handles to, to developing my forearm. Um, but uh, you can take a lot of angles with, with a dumbbell. Um, you can take an angle to the side, gradually work your way up into more of a straight up and down position. And you'll notice that when you work all these angles, you feel it a little bit differently in the forearm, in different parts of your forearm. Um, let's see. Ah, here we go. Um, here's some kind of unconventional wrist exercises that I've done in the past. Um, I'm a big fan of using these just regular kind of nylon handles. Um, and there's a reason for it. For arm wrestling, it tends to be really, uh, it, it tends to be a really good way of training pronation and supination. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, okay. I'll just throw a plate on here. Just a standard iron mine loading pin. Okay. So, when doing All right. When doing training pronation, and, and this is one of the things I was talking to, uh, let's see, uh, I think it was James G. had said on uh, one of the arm wrestling threads on the grip board about, you know, the different pressures you need for a post maneuver, which, you know, is here, back towards your shoulder, this way. So you need wrist curling pressure here, right? Here. You almost have to be able to work your shoulder behind your hand and apply wrist, wrist pressure. Um, but you also need kind of a downward rotation that differs than generic pronation. And of course, pronation, you can work with these handles as well. But you also need kind of a pressure where you're working it with your wrist bent. Okay? So you're, you're already bent in the wrist, and then you're pronating. So it feels a lot different than just training normal pronation. And this is definitely one of those exercises you want to start out very light with because it feels extremely awkward at first. Um, a lot of people can't even kind of get it right because they're like, all right, let me see, I'm overlapping 
this over my hand, and then I'm turning, and you have to kind of correct the wrist position so that the pressure is coming along the thumb and then back over the wrist. So it's here, like this. I hope that's, hope you can see that well. Okay. Um, supination as well. Supination, you know, potato, potato. Uh, you can train bent wrist and in, or you can train flat wrist and in. And you're going to feel it in a completely different spot in your arm. But it's important because, you know, when I say train your wrist in every direction and you're going to see, you know, mass in your forearm, you're also going to see strength develop in different parts of your, your wrists and forearms, your forearms, but, you know, we call it wrist strength. Um, the other thing is um, radial and ulnar deviation. Uh, you can train with this move right here. A lot of people do uh, uh, sledgehammer levers, which I do as well, but you can train here. Let the, let the cable bring your wrist back, arm straight out, turn your wrist down, like that. Another one you might want to start kind of light and then gradually work to. Um, sledgehammers, obviously, uh, for a lot of you guys are pretty familiar with sledgehammer training. Um, the big one would be, you know, coin lift, taking it and keeping the, the hammer out straight. Um, one of the things that I like to do is try to keep my, my arm as straight as possible. Uh, you see a lot of guys that do this kind of bent arm, wrist flop down. It, they keep the hammer level, but is the pressure, does it really test radial deviation? I don't think it does. I think, you know, being able to, to keep your arm straight, keep your wrist as straight as possible, you're going to have a little more tilt in the hammer, but you're, you're really testing that radial deviation more than if you were, um, you know, here with your wrist bent. I mean, your arm bent like that. I mean, here, you can see a difference. My wrist is straight. Um, let's see. How do I maneuver this so you can see this? Yeah. All right. Um, back this up. Okay. You can see. Let me get this ball. Make some noise for you guys. Keep you guys up. Okay. Keep you on your toes. All right. Okay. Uh. For me, as somebody that's had thumb problems in the past, I try to train uh, as many different things as I can without stretching my thumb out too wide. So, like I like the, I used to like the benefits of thick handles, two-inch handles, um, uh, on my fingers, but not so much on my thumb. So, what I would do in, for for wrist curls was. I would take the end of a, a barbell, you can see, okay, stand over it like this, right on cowboy, and then uh, start with the wrist bent back, wrist curl up, wrist bent back, curl up, and you can see my thumb is lapped over the edge, so I'm not putting as much pressure on it. Um, let me see. The other one, which really kind of hits the break the radialis is um, this, a lot more than a normal wrist curl. It's almost like doing a wrist curl with more weight on one side than the other. Grabbing it on the thin part of the Olympic handle um, on the opposite side of the weight, like this, you can see, if I can remember it, you can see my wrist is, my hand and wrist are behind the plate, and then wrist curl up. Um, since in arm wrestling, we have to do a lot of things with our wrist held static. We have to get it into position and then hold. Um, I like to try to incorporate pull downs and rows with a bent wrist. So a lot of times I would 
do kind of like a landmine uh, row with my wrist bent like this and then row up because a lot of times when you're in a hook you need to drag somebody back and that's the other thing too um, hook arm wrestling will definitely develop forearms no question about it if you're looking for forearm mass and, and strength um, arm wrestling in a hook will certainly do that for you uh, in my book I wrote about using half dumbbells okay and people always wonder what I mean by that and it's just kind of just taking a dumbbell handle putting a plate on one side like like so okay and doing hammer curls with it this way okay doing let's see if I can bring this down a level so you can see the bench okay so doing if you can see my wrist, the angle it's at, it's bent down, okay, and then I'm turning it up. So it's almost like working supination with a bent wrist, like so. It's one of those things you want to start with a with a light weight. Um, you can do the same rotation, flat wristed and turn supination. You can do it with a bent wrist. Again, you're gonna, it's going to feel completely different when you do it with a bent wrist. Um, working your knuckles up and down, because a lot of back pressure in arm wrestling comes from that radial deviation that you did that here, boom, right there. Uh, over the wrist, I mean over the knee, you can do this with the half dumbbell and then kind of graduate to, to putting on more weight, um, adding a sledgehammer. Um, something like that where with the sledgehammer you have a lot of weight on the end it takes a lot more kind of control to be able to hold it and, and maneuver it and take it back bring it up or take it and bring it down over your knee and up um, you know you can do it again over this way over your over your knee the opposite way, I got a nice little crack in my elbow. Glad that happened. Uh, <laughs> reverse wrist curls. Okay. I kind I, I prefer to do these kind of unconventionally now. Um because one of the things that I noticed was I never liked to do, do wrist curls with an Olympic bar. It never felt I mean reverse wrist curls with an Olympic bar because it never felt comfortable. I mean you can do it. I felt a little bit more comfortable doing it with dumbbells over the knee this way. I feel a lot more comfortable doing it uh, with the curl bar. Just taking it, kind of grabbing it so that my hands aren't completely face down, palm down, but are at a little bit of an angle. That always felt a little bit more comfortable to me. Um, and uh, wrist wrench. And I'm sorry, this uh, I do know Mike Cochran that makes this, but I promise this isn't some kind of like shameless plug. Uh, I really do like this wrist wrench. Um, it wasn't around actually when I arm wrestled and when I put all the majority of the mass on my forearms. Um, but if you take it, if you were to deadlift the wrist wrench, you would grab it this way where it was pulling against your fingers this way between your thumb and fingers and you know it's going to open you up it's a great piece to do wrist curls with I would recommend obviously the, uh, the smaller version the one and seven eighths but uh, if you take it and you grab it so that the uh, straps are pulling towards you rather than away from you you can really comfortably do wrist uh, reverse wrist curls uh, there's really nothing impeding you. You don't have to put it over your knee. Uh, it's actually extremely comfortable. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, one of you guys was asking me about pronation, and I was explaining that you can use a karate belt, um, like a, a martial arts belt, to wrap over or a towel, I happen to have uh, 
this little device given to me by um, an old arm wrestling friend of mine named Guy Sorsa, who, uh, all time great, by the way. Just figured I'd throw that in there, just in case Guy's listening. And he still wants to be my friend. Um, let's see. A little too large. Okay. Okay. Bang. Bang. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you want to work pronation from the ground like you're doing a curl, a lot of people will just kind of take it and put it over their knuckles more kind of working radial deviation here. You curls with it, holding it statically this way. You can put it into motion this way. Or you can do pronation, curls with your pronation here. You can also do that with the nylon handle I showed you, overlapping it over your, um, over your arm, like so, and rotating through it. Um, other exercises that you can do with the half dumbbell, taking it, turning it up this way, it's kind of going to work the same pressure as if you were to take a sledgehammer and lever it back to your nose or your head or, you know, just back and then up, you know, just kind of like that. Um, and, uh, let's see, what else do I do? I don't think that's about it. Um, I never really got into plate wrist curls and stuff. I've been doing those a little bit recently. Just whack myself in the pecker. Um, but, uh, for the most part, that type of stuff, the plate wrist curl, don't like the way they made my fingers feel. Uh, never use really thick handles. I think if you have a smaller hand, I don't think that really benefits you that much. I think Put a lot of strain on your on your thumb, and and you don't want to do that. Uh, let's see, well, that's about it. All right. Hope it was helpful. Feel free to ask me any questions if you got them.